Hello and a warm welcome to what's in this week's Open Times with me, Finn Nixon. And me, Cathy Griffiths. And me, Sandy Neal. We have lots of news and photographs for you in this week's newspaper. And remember that here at the Oban Times, we are keen to hear your stories and see your photographs as well. Email editor at obentimes.co.uk or message us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. So what do we have for you in this week's newspaper? What have you been up to this week, Cathy? Well, people living on timber producing mull are struggling to buy firewood to heat their homes. It seems that global demand for biomass to make electricity and for the likes of uh, building materials have hoovered up any timber that's already been harvested on the island, resulting in the only wood being left being either green, so that's useless to burn for now, or diseased larch that uh, really shouldn't be moved. One of the community councillors, John Morn, said that the possibility of people having to buy back timber from the mainland is just madness. Near Oban, planners are being asked to uh, renew permission for a proposed roundabout at Dunbeg. And uh, that the idea is that that roundabout would serve any future development, including a potential retail park at land north and south of the A85, close to Penifure Cottage. Staying with Dunbeg, housing developers Link have submitted a scoping report to Argyll and Butte Council in support of building the next 430 new homes, and that's to the west of Dunstaffnage Mains Farm. So that would make up phase four of the major ongoing Dunbeg housing development plan. It's really spreading out over there. So from land to sea, Oban International Sea Shanty Festival drops its anchor in town this June and organisers are hoping for a swell second year. With the Rockfield Centre and bid for Oban fully on board, the dates for your diary are June the 23rd to June the 25th and it will be bringing a cargo and veritable treasure chest of live music and workshops our way. So that's definitely something to look forward to. And we've also got news of April's Highlands and Islands Music and dance festival coming up so uh, lots going on great stuff Kathy thank you and you can read all those stories that Kathy mentioned at www.obentimes.co.uk or by picking up an Oban Times at a local shop or petrol station when it comes out on Thursday what about you Sandy what have you been looking into this week well thank you very much Finn well Kate Forbes's bid to become Scotland's next first minister has lost support from her fellow local SNP MSPs as she denied her campaign had been derailed by comments over gay marriage you can read all about that in tomorrow's paper a coalition of 100 alcohol brands from Tenants Lager to Isla Rum have signed an open letter to the Scottish Government urging them not to destroy Scotland's drinks industry. The Scottish Government has got a proposed ban on alcohol advertising. There's a consultation on at the moment until the 9th of March and it proposes measures to tackle Scotland's troubled relationship with alcohol. An environmental campaign group has hit back at claims that the decision to block a new salmon farm on Loch Long was based on fear and lack of knowledge. From the Hebrides to Hebron, Mull resident Paul Gibson has arrived into Israel and occupied Palestine for a three-month stay as an international presence for people living under occupation. You can find out his story in Thursday's paper and online. A Sky String exhibition. Hold yourselves back. But a Sky String exhibition is getting longer after striking a chord with audiences. And a new documentary tells the stories of the lives of Scottish centenarians. Oh dear. Centenarians, would that be Sandy? Centenarians. Thank you, Cathy. Centenarians in a fascinating look at social changes over the last hundred years. Amongst the many exceptional storytellers is Margaret Kennedy from Tyree and Willie MacLeod from Stornoway who, as a young man, was part of the salvage team when the SS politician, which was full of whiskey, ran aground close to Eriskay in 1941. And Thursday is also D-Day, Decision Day for Argyll and Butte Council's cash-strapped budget. What cuts are on the way? You'll have to find out. Better start counting those pennies in the uh, piggy bank, folks. Exactly. It's all coming. So you can read about that in the Open Times. Finn, what's been happening in the sport? 
Well, we have the Shinty Roundup for you as local teams continue their pre-season preparations. Unfortunately, several matches were called off due to unplayable pitches at the weekend, but we look ahead to this year's top two divisions and the final round of pre-season friendlies. There is also exciting news for Jody Sloss from Taynault. The racing driver has joined a UK development academy, and we have all the details about that. The football was also hit by the weather, but both Oban Law and Rugby sides picked up strong results. The women starting their national plate campaign with a convincing win in Dundee, and the men drawing at Uddingston to remain unbeaten. There was also success for the Oban Otter swimmers in Glasgow, and a mid-Argyle athlete won a bronze medal at the Scottish Indoor Under-20 Championships. And there was also some superb running from Ali Chong and her mum, Doreen Henderson, They both won gold at the National Masters Cross Country Championships recently. Doreen from Connell was the fastest in the Veteran 75 category and Ali was the fastest in the Veteran 50 category. Well done ladies. That's your sport for this week though and don't forget you can read all these stories and more at www.obentimes.co.uk or by picking up a newspaper in local shops and garages. And don't forget if you have a story get in touch. You can call us on 01631 568 000 or email editor at obentimes.co.uk or message us on one of our social media platforms. But for this week, thanks for listening and it's goodbye from me, Finn Nixon. Goodbye from me, Cathy Griffiths. And goodbye from me, Sandy Neal. Bye. Bye.